you can learn a lot of life lessons just thinking while you do art. Sometimes when I'm burning, it's at night and I'll have the windows open and listen to the beautiful sounds of frogs and crickets and locusts outside. And it's so peaceful. And I'll have some time to think. And I want to share with you some of the life lessons I learned while burning my first gourd, while showing you the entire process from start to finish. Number one, don't be afraid to try new things. That's kind of part of the adventure of life is to try new things, have something to look forward to, give yourself some fresh new outlook. And you'll never know what it is that you love and you don't if you never try new things. If you've never tried vanilla, then you'd never know if you like vanilla better than chocolate. And if you never tried chocolate, you'd never know if chocolate was better than vanilla. Personally, I like vanilla, but I would never know if I didn't try them. You've got to try new things in order to know what you love and what you don't. And actually, trying new things makes you better as an artist and as a crafter, because as you try these new things, you begin to learn not only what you love and what you don't love, but you also get to learn how this is different than what you're used to. And in my case, that would be, how is it burning a gourd versus burning wood, which is typically what I burn. It makes you understand your art and your craft better. You also learn to problem solve in new ways. It helps you to think outside the box when you try new things. And when you do that, it expands your mind and it helps you to bring that element of thinking outside the box to other parts of your life. It helps you to see things in a new way. And it's beautiful. Number two, it's okay to make mistakes. You know, mistakes can lead you to more learning and more growth if you can let them take you there. You know, a lot of us will punish ourselves for making mistakes. And really, those mistakes are helping us if you don't make mistakes, then you're probably not pushing yourself to do anything that you haven't already done. You're probably not growing. It's okay to make mistakes. Those mistakes will teach us how to do better down the road. And besides, when you make a mistake, you're often not the only one to make that mistake. You can share that experience with others and then they can find your experience and learn from it. Maybe learn how to fix their mistakes the way that you fixed yours or learn how to let it go or accept them the way that you've let it go or accepted it. When you share the mistakes that you've made, you actually make the world a better place because you can help other people to learn from your mistakes. And I truly believe that life is too short to make all the mistakes yourself. Number three, Sometimes it's all right not to have a plan. Having a plan can be empowering, but on the flip side, it can also be limiting. Winging it has its risks, but it can also be so freeing to just go without any plan, without any idea of what's going to show up on your art piece. What's going to come to my mind? And how is my hand going to translate that onto the work that I'm working on? Am I gonna love it? Am I gonna hate it? I don't know, but let's see. And it gives you a chance to explore. It gives you a chance to really free your mind. Sometimes it can help you through artist block to just try something and not have a plan what it is that you're going to burn to just sit down and start burning. And it can teach you more about your style, more about your art, more about yourself. It's like the ultimate exploration. Number four, things aren't always perfect, but you can still make them beautiful. I ignored a lot of the blotches on the gourd because I figured that's kind of the style of a gourd. It just has those little blemishes. But as I was burning, I came across a tiny little crack in the gourd. 
I had to stop and my heart sank. I thought, oh no, how deep is this? Is this going to ruin all the work that I've done? Am I gonna have to start over and just throw this one out? So I started checking it out. And as it turns out, it only went through the yellow surface. The thicker white surface wasn't broken. And this was going to be a birdhouse, not a water bottle. It wasn't going to threaten the integrity of the birdhouse. The birdhouse was not going to fall apart because of this little crack. The crack was only skin deep. And when I'm talking skin deep, I'm talking about the teeny tiny little thin outer shell, not even the inner thicker shell. And since that wasn't an issue, then really it was only a blemish. So I decided I would turn that into a leafy little something. What is that leafy little something? <laughs> I actually don't know, <laughs> but I sure enjoyed burning it. So it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. Number five, don't make life harder than it has to be. Give yourself permission to use what you've got and give yourself permission to use the right tools for the right job. I used to consider myself to be the queen of using the wrong tools to get the job done. I learned later that that cost me time and that cost me more effort and that cost me more trial and error and it even damaged things that really didn't need to be damaged. I used to sacrifice myself getting bruised and scraped and sometimes really hurt, moving furniture the wrong way or nailing things to the wall with my high-heeled shoe instead of a hammer. Since then, I've learned to do better. I save up for the tools that'll make my life easier, not to mention less painful. And I also don't have to have the biggest and best tools that you ever saw in your life. I don't have to have a big fancy camera. I don't have to have crazy equipment. I can have an iPhone and make these YouTube videos where people can watch the burnings that I do without me having to spend an arm and a leg, probably a bruised and scraped up arm and a leg, in order to get the equipment. I can use what I've got and work with it. You also don't have to just deal with big frustrations. Do your best to solve them or to change them or at least keep them at bay. For example, these round gourds can be really squirrely on a flat table. But once I put some bean bags under it, not only was it easier on my shoulders and my arms that had been trying unsuccessfully to hold it in place, but it was also more relaxing and I can enjoy the process more. I didn't have to worry that I might burn myself or burn my table if it unexpectedly rolled to the side while I was burning. You can take those unwieldy, irritating frustrations and find a way to solve them or change them. And if you can't do those things, it's probably time to let those frustrations go entirely. Either accept them or remove them. Number six, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to show that you don't know something. Asking is not an expression of weakness. Asking is actually an expression of strength. Sometimes we get so caught up in everything that we know, and we know we know, and everyone else should know that we know so much. But really, if we can listen to other people and listen for what it is that they know that we don't, not only are we going to be smarter, but we are also going to have the rare opportunity to skip ahead and not have to learn all of the things, not have to make all the same mistakes, not have to figure it out ourselves, which sometimes can be very expensive. In this case, I was looking up online how to seal a gourd. And there were some different options. And I thought, you know, this is outdoor. Maybe I should use some kind of a, a, a deck sealer or something because this is a birdhouse. 
So I went and looked and I found a few little forums here and there that talked about using a clear spray paint. Some of them talked about using an oil. Some of them talked about using wax. I was burning this gourd for a charitable auction and my friend was involved in the auction and she's the one who sent me the gourd to try out. So I decided to go ahead and reach out to her and ask her, what kind of finish should I be using for this? She replied back that her friend, who is a professional gourd artist, uses natural shoe polish. And I thought, huh, I didn't hear that on any of the forums. <laughs> so I went to go look it up and I thought, what is in natural shoe polish? And actually, its main base, if you look at most shoe polishes that are natural, it looks like most of them are oil and wax. And that's what you use for these outdoor birdhouses. I thought, oh, okay, excellent. Now I have the answer and I didn't have to spend a fortune trying to figure things out and try things and experiment. But it sure would have saved me a lot of time if I had asked her in the first place. And that's the beauty of asking. You can skip the steps that you don't want to take. And that is huge. A lot of times in life, you don't get what you don't ask for. And actually, it's because someone asked that I decided to go ahead and create my shading course. And because someone asked, I went ahead and created the Beginner Wood Burning Art Challenge. And because someone asked, I created the lab, the learn and burn course that is for beginners, teaching you the basics so that you can get clean, crisp lines like you want to. It's all because somebody asked. So when you ask, realize that you might actually be opening the door for a lot of people behind you, and you might be helping them just by asking. Now, if you're interested in these wood burning courses, those are all over at burnsavvyacademy.com and you can find courses that will suit your skill level. And that's where I answer all of my students' questions. And actually, that's what this channel is. I'm answering a lot of questions that I had when I was a beginner and I'm answering questions of my fellow pyros. That's what I love to do. So if that is of interest to you, feel free to subscribe. And while we're asking questions, I wanna ask you one. What was your favorite life lesson in this video? Or what's a lesson that you've learned from wood burning or from burning gourds? I'd love to hear that in the comments. Let me know down below. Once you've told me what your favorite life lesson is, then come check out these videos that I've got here for you. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Later, Pyro.